how to write the introduction section of a research article. How do we write the introduction section of a research article? Now, many people ask this question and I'm telling you it is very easy. If you follow what I'm telling you today, you will be able to write a wonderful introduction section of any research article, any study design, whether it's a clinical trial, whether it's an observational study, if it's a traditional review, if it's a thesis, if it's a systematic review or meta-analysis or a case study. Don't worry about it. The principles you will learn in this video apply to all sorts of study designs. So the introduction section. What is the introduction section of a research article? Introduction section actually teaches you what is the problem. It teaches whom? The reader. It tells the reader about the problem. What is the problem? Why this article is being written? Why are you writing the article? So remember three components of the introduction section. Three components. Number one, what are you doing? So that's your research question. What are you doing? What is the problem? Why are you doing it? How important this problem is? What are the consequences if the problem is solved, if the problem is not solved? And the last part is, how do you gonna do it? So you mention a little bit of idea, what kind of study design it is, how you plan to approach. So these are the three important parts that should be there in your introduction section. Now, let's talk about this. Remember, somebody rightly said that introduction section of a research article is understood if we imagine a hamburger. Yes, a hamburger is a research article. What does that mean? Hamburger has a piece of bread on top, then there is meat in the middle, then you have another piece of bread at the bottom, right? So the top piece of bread is your introduction section. So imagine a hamburger without meat. Your hamburger will not look pretty, right? Same thing with your research article. If your introduction section is missing, your research article will not look nice. So make sure you have your introduction section and that is the first part of your hamburger. Now, also remember hourglass. There's an hourglass approach mentioned by many experts of writing an introduction section of a research article. What do we mean by the hourglass approach? Hourglass looks like this, right? We all know this from the top. So the hourglass is broad from the top and narrowed at the bottom, right? The same thing is within, with the introduction section of any article that you start broad and you narrow it down. You start broad and you narrow it down. Now let me give you an example. Let's say you are writing a paper on the assassination of the great president, John F. Kennedy. Let's say this is your research question. What are the causes of John F. Kennedy's assassination? So this is your research question. Now, how do you begin? You first, you directly don't, you don't directly begin with that in this article, we are exploring why the president John F. Kennedy was assassinated. No, this is not a professional way of starting. The way you start is you start with the background that who John F. Kennedy was, something about his legacy, something about why, his, he, why is he famous, something about his childhood probably, and his education, then his political career, then the election campaign, then the election, and then the circumstances that what he did as policies, and then eventually the assassination. So you have started broad, and then you narrowed down to the research question that in this article we will explore the causes that led to the assassination of the great president, John F. Kennedy. Now see, we started broad and we narrowed it down. So this is how the introduction section should be structured. Now you remember the three parts. What are you doing? Why are you doing? And how do you do it? Now, ideally, divide your introduction section into three parts. The first part, first part, I would say is you start with a, a story or a quotation or some striking fact, some statistical fact. So yes, you can start with statistical facts, the numbers, some kind of numbers, some kind of numbers. These many people are affected. These many people have been affected. So that's your start, the starting paragraph. You can, if you don't wanna do that, you can start with a quotation of a famous person. Let's say if you are really writing a paper on John F. Kennedy, then John F. Kennedy's quotation, you start the paper like this. This is how, this is the best way to write any article, any chapter, anything, any essay, any blog, you can apply this principle to blog writing, 
and story writing, anything, you start with a quotation. It will look pretty. So you now know how to start. So you have the beginning. Now, the first part is, what is the problem? So now you mention the problem. Once you mention the problem, now, why this problem is important? What do you gain if you solve this problem? Or what do you lose? Or what will people lose if you don't solve this problem? So this is the problem. And then the last part, the third part, is a little bit about how you plan to solve the problem. That's it. These are the three parts and you can, you can put them in three paragraphs. You can also put them in two paragraphs. You can also put them in five paragraphs. So the number of paragraphs doesn't matter. What matters is if you have covered these points. You started properly, professionally, you mentioned the problem and you mentioned your research question. Problem and research question can be two different things, depending upon your topic, depending upon your study design, depending upon what you're doing. And then you mention the importance of the problem. What will happen if this problem is solved? What will happen if this problem is not solved? And then in the end, last part is the future. The future, yes. How do you plan to conduct this study? So that will be your introduction section. Now, what about literature review? Yes, in thesis, you do bring literature review. And in articles, yes, you can and you should because you need to now find some kind of research gap, gap in the knowledge. In introduction section, the, one of the best parts is the gap in the knowledge. And gap in the knowledge you find by reading previous papers. So you do some literature review, dedicate one or two paragraphs for some previous literature, previous research, so you can find more gaps in knowledge that will enhance your paper, that will make your paper or project interesting. So remember the gap as well. So you have the why, you have the what, you have the plan, what you plan to do, how you plan to do it, but you also bring some literature search because you want to mention a gap. So the gap in the knowledge is very important. Now, what about the references? How many references? Yes, of course, you bring references because you have some literature review in there, one or two paragraphs, so you will give some citation. And remember, if you remember the video, the plagiarism video I mentioned, that you do not copy paste. So you write it in your own words and you give a reference. Same in the introduction section, you give some reference. So total how many references? I would say 8 to 15 references, maybe 20 references. Yes, do bring some references, do bring some citations. And then your introduction section is ready. Now last part is what about tables and figures? Do you bring tables and figures in introdu introduction? It's not traditional, but it looks prettier. Why not? Yes, of course you can. It will look good, it will look pretty. So the op it's optional, it's, it's your choice whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it. But either way, if you complete those components that I mentioned, your introduction section will be an amazing introduction section. Follow this advice that I have given to you in this video and begin writing today and you will see, you will produce a wonderful paper. Stay tuned. See you in the next video. Thank you.